Oh, hey everyone. I was just getting ready to tell you about today's sponsor. I'm just kidding, I don't get sponsors. Anyways, welcome back to Potty Planet Entertainment and Merry Christmas. My name is Chris and in case you don't know, I review movies and I rank them on a scale of 0 to 100 in increments of 5. Welcome back to another holiday special and today we are going to be talking about National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I like the slipcover. Walmart's giving, is putting these on Christmas movies. It's nice. Anyways, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation was released in 1989 and stars Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, Juliette Lewis, Johnny Galecki, and Brian Doyle Murray. It was directed by Jeremiah Chekchik, which, by the way, this was his first film. Great start. And it was produced by Tom Jacobson and Daniel Grodnick. And this movie tells the story of... You all know him. He's the guy from the... There was two vacation movies before this. Now, I, I haven't actually seen your vacation, but I have seen the first vacation. And where's where's the first vacation? Where's it at? I got it in front. Here it is. There we go. So the first vacation movie is one of my all-time favorite comedies. Now, I will admit, most people prefer this one to this one. I actually prefer this one to this one. Um, just a little bit. Not by a lot, but I, I do prefer this one to this one. Um... And it's about Clark Griswold and his family. He's He wants to put together the perfect Christmas, right? And so he gets all the in-laws and all the relatives over to come over to his house. And he's going to make this the best Christmas ever. But everything goes wrong. Everything that can go wrong goes wrong. And you just see him dealing with this and slowly descending into madness. It's very funny. It's one of the best Christmas movies ever. Um... I really like this movie. I didn't appreciate it very much when I was a kid. And I think that's because the movie is more uh, more marketed toward adults anyways. And adults can relate to it better. Um, but I, now that I am older, I really, really appreciate this film. And I really like it. So let's get into my pros with this. So this movie opens up with an animation. This very pointless animation. I have no idea why it's there. I've seen it in a couple other movies like Grease. But it just it doesn't need to be there. But it's kind of nice, and it's kind of funny, so I don't mind it. It's really unnecessary, but it's nice. Uh, this is a really, really funny film. I don't think it's as funny as the first movie is, but it's very funny. Th the humor in this movie really, really likes. See, this is, this is the problem with comedies nowadays. Every comedy just wants to be stupid. Long gone are the days of, where is it? 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 <sighs> Men in Black. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. These are smart comedies. Why don't we ever get real comedies like this anymore? Now, every, nowadays, every comedy has to be stupid. Like, whatever happened to, like, real, like, smart comedy like we got from movies like this? I miss that. I really miss that. And, I, you know what, man? I was born too late. I was born too late. I really wish I was around in the 80s because I could have appreciated this instead of a lot of comedies that we get nowadays, you know? <sighs> Why did I have to be born in 99? Why couldn't I have been born in like the 70s or something? I've been like an 80s kid. That would have been nice. But I wasn't, so I have to deal with it. Um, th this movie has a uh, song that was written for it. This movie, you know, the first movie is always known for Holiday Road. This movie doesn't have that. They, they actually came up with an original song for this movie. That's actually pretty good. Um... So, one of the most famous scenes from this movie is at the end of the movie when Chevy Chase finally just loses it. And he goes on this infamous rant. And it's great. I like it almost as much as I like the ending of, uh, of uh, Screws when he goes on TV. And he's just, he's just ranting about goodness and kindness. I almost like it as much as that. It's a really, really good scene. Um, Ch Chevy Chase has a scene in this movie where uh, a little girl that he's related to through his wife... She's asking him if he's Santa Claus, and she's saying, well, because her, her father is poor. And she said, well, we didn't get presents last year, even though we were good all year. And he's like, well, you know, Santa Claus is, is definitely going to bring you something this year. And it's a really, like, nice moment. It's probably the only really nice moment that this movie has. Well, no, it's actually got two. There's another scene later in the movie where he's talking about, uh, where he's talking with his, uh, with his uh, dad, which I, I wrote that down in here, right? I will talk about that later. Um, there's a scene... So, he wants this Christmas bonus so he can build a pool for his family. 
Um, and he's staring out the window, uh, and, and he's looking out, and he's picturing this pool, and then he starts picturing this woman he had saw at a store earlier getting undressed. And it, it's pretty funny, um, but it's also kind of awkward with your parents in the room, even though you don't actually see her naked. Um, so one of the, like, the most famous things from this movie is that he's trying to put all these Christmas lights on his house, right? And he's trying to, like, completely coat his house with these Christmas lights. And he, he goes through so much trouble to get him up. And then when he finally gets him up, they don't work, right? And it hypes it up. It plays this music. Everybody's family's doing a drum roll, right? It really hypes it up. And then when, it just doesn't work. And for the next few minutes of the film, he's trying to figure it out. And then you find out, like, it's really connected through this. And he's like, hey, I gotta work. And then it turns off because of things I won't spoil for you. But he's like, it's not working now. It's, it's really, really funny stuff. Um, this movie has a lot of slapstick humor in it that works really well in its favor. Like, he steps on, like, a couple of board. He steps on a board and slaps him in the face. He turns around and the other one slaps him in the face. Or he falls through the ceiling on top of a bunk bed. It's got some good slapstick humor in it. Um, this movie, like, really, like, advanced adult humor in Christmas films. Because for, before this, mostly what people had was movies like It's a Wonderful Life. But... This movie, like, sort of um, took Christmas movies and really changed the genre for it. It helped set up movies like uh, like Home Alone. Even though that's not a, uh, a, uh, a an adult film, it, it sort of took Christmas. It's like, so Christmas was always depicted as being so wonderful in movies. But this movie took it and said, no, Christmas time sucks, and here's why. And it really changed the Christmas movie genre. So kudos to this movie for that. Um... This movie really is very relatable as well because it really exaggerates the Christmas problems that adults seem to face and even like kids seem to face during the holidays. Like um, when all the in-laws move in and so the kids have to sleep together in the same bed because one of the, they have to give up their bed to s some of the old people that came over, you know, and they have to sleep together and like they don't like it because one of them might smell bad or like in Home Alone when... Kevin is complaining he doesn't want to sleep in the same bed as his cousin because he might pee on him, you know. And then uh, it shows, like, how much difficult it is to get the lights up on the trees and how stressful it can be to uh, buy presents and how money might be tight and stuff like that. It's pretty relatable, even though it really exaggerates everything. Or how, like, you could have that one cousin that's just super freaking annoying. <laughs> or, um, this movie has this scene where... Uh, he go where Mr. Griswold goes sledding, right? And he goes down this hill, and he just goes completely out of control to the point where he slides out on the highway and into a Walmart parking lot. And then later on, you see, um, you see somebody that he's related to through his who his wife. He picks up the sled out of the garage, and the whole bottom of it is just completely ripped out. It's a uh, really really funny. Um, uh, this movie, I think, it gives a good message about how to deal with the holidays and that's what i was talking about earlier when he has a scene with his dad when his dad's he, when his dad's like hey you know it's not all gonna go perfectly you just gotta take what you can get and make it the best that you can even though it's not always gonna go according to plan it's a nice scene and it sends a, a message to people who really stress out about the holidays um and I love that how you see Chase's Chase, Chevy Chase's descent into madness. He starts out all happy, and as things go wrong, wrong, he just gets more and more and more aggravated until he just has that big burst out scene at the end of the movie that I was talking about. Every character brings a little something to this film. You know, even though Chevy Chase is obviously centered stage, every character has something to contribute to this film. Like nobody's really there as just background. Every character has like a little something that they can bring to the table with this film, which is good because this movie has a big cast. Um, one of the things I like about this is that William Hickey, who plays um, Aunt, what's her face, what Aunt Beth, I think he plays her her husband, and he was only in his fifties when they made this, but he was playing a much much older character. And to be honest with you, I had no clue that he he was that young in this movie. Like he was younger than my parents. Like, that's really something. He did a really good job playing an old man. Um, there's a scene where, like, all the, the old people are sitting around watching the parade. And the guy on TV keeps make, keeps he keeps talking about nuts, right? But it, it's supposed to be, like, a, in, it, you know, an in, innuendo. And it's really funny how, like, like, he doesn't mean it. 
but it comes across that way. It's similar to like when sportscasters are like trying to like draw something like on a football game. They're like, see, you're going to see him go here and he's going to go and he's drawing all of it. And then he accidentally draws like a male's genitals. It's a similar joke like that and it works really well. Um, John Hughes did a really good job with writing for this film. He, uh, he worked on Home Alone as well. And he, he did some really, really good uh, writing in this film. Um, I really like this movie. Um, oh, here, here's another one. So there's a scene where, like, in the opening where they're driving to go get a Christmas tree, right? And he, Chevy Chase merges over without paying attention. He goes right underneath this giant truck. And it's pretty intense, but it's pretty funny because his wife starts doing the Lord's Prayer. And it, it's, it's really, really good. Really good writing. Um, you just don't get smart comedies like this anymore. You really don't. I miss comedies like this. Like, can we please... Please get comedies like Men in Black back. Please, can we please get smart comedies back? We need more comedies like this. Like, I don't, it's not, I appreciate a stupid comedy every now and then. But, man, I really miss, like, real comedies like Men in Black and, like, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I think this is a great film, and I am going to give National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation a 90. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to Pirate Planet Entertainment for more and hit the like button. Leave movie review suggestions down in the comments down below. Follow me on Instagram at Pirate Planet Entertainment for channel updates and Merry Christmas.